tell us more. David. Thank you. So, um, I'm from California. I've lived in Amsterdam for a few years. I've traveled in a lot of countries, and I'm a water economist. And the first thing people say is, what the hell is a water economist? And uh, I'll start with the easy thing. Water is very important to everybody. It's important for life. You need it to drink, obviously. This is not uh, deep science. I'm an economist, remember. We need it for life. We need it for work. We need it for manufacturing. We need it for, for food, for farming. And we need it for nature. A lot of us enjoy water as it flows in nature. And um, the, re the work that I do is about the economics of water or how we divide the water in different uses. And economics usually means efficiency. Uh, and water is an increasingly scarce resource, which is why it's relevant. But also water is a very political topic. People care a lot about how water flows in society. There's a human right to water. We share water in the environment. And so I'm a political economist, and I need to keep both of these ideas in mind when I do my work. And uh, the way I like to explain it is that economics is about making the pie bigger. The pie is on the left, by the way. And politics is how we divide the pie into pieces, right? It helps to keep track of what is re relevant at the moment right now. And so the political economy of water is how we handle both of those problems. So, oh, right, I've got a book. Here's my book. I'll pass the book along. There you go. Okay, now you'd be able to, there's an opportunity to buy this book, but it is going to be a collector's item because this book is actually the first edition of my book. I self-published it, which I recommend to anybody who has an idea that publishers don't buy, for example. Uh, and it's been uh, a fabulous success for me in the sense that I have had a lot of great conversations and I've learned a lot from this book. The reason it's called The End of Abundance is because it is the end of business as usual. And water is scarce, so we have to use economics. But also, water affects, and the way we treat water affects all of us. We have to use politics. We have to keep that in mind when we talk about these issues. And the book I divided into personal topics, which is part one. For example, how do we pay for our tap water, right? Our drinking water, our bottled water, and in uh, or agricultural water. And in part two of the book, I get into the social dimensions of water. For example, how do we handle environmental water as a as a group, and, and what goes wrong, for example, when you have one group that is capturing the water. So those are the way I break the book in half, and there's a lot of different topics. But uh, this book was, was kind of a long book, you can see it's like 280 pages, and so I tried to make it kind of easy to understand. I tried to make it for the water logs, people who are willing to spend a lot of time and money reading a book. And then I thought, well, wait a second, everybody cares about water, and, and everybody includes people like you. The reason I'm doing this talk is because I want to introduce these topics to the general audience, to normal people, as we say, because they care about water issues, and I want them to understand how to think about those issues, at least from an economic perspective. I'm changing the title. It's Common Sense Solutions. It's going to be shorter. It's going to be cheaper. And I want everybody to buy a copy. There will be some free copies for people who, who do special work to help me on the book, but usually it'll be cheap enough for you to buy and recommend your friends. It's not a sales pitch, though. I'm not selling this book right now because I just want to, to get over the idea. It's still going to be about part one and part two, but what I'm going to try and do is, <coughs> sorry, what I'm going to try and do is, is keep it as, as straightforward as possible so that everybody can get it to the, to the idea. They can get it better, faster, stronger. It's not going to be harder. It's going to be better, faster, and stronger book that you can use to understand these ideas, assuming you actually care about water, which theoretically you all do. So uh, an example uh, from the book, we're going to talk about how should you manage drinking water. Well, we need to pay for the water. We need to pay, make sure we can retain, retain the service. We have to make sure that water is scarce is paid for. But we also have to make sure that we, you know, we, we do this so that we don't have a system that runs dry. The Dutch, by the way, don't have this problem. Many, many countries have this problem. But then you say, what about human rights? And that's where I get into that part one, part two thing, right? Economics is part one, human rights is actually part two. So that will be covered in the book, but you have to take it one step at a time. It's the basic problem. Here's the table of contents. You can see it covers a whole bunch of water issues. I'm not going to read all those, luckily for all of us. But it's, it's basically divided into those two categories, of the economic and the political. And one builds into the next. So here's the plan. I gotta write a draft, I gotta work fast. I'm gonna get comments from readers. If you really care about this, the next slide, you want to pay attention. And then I'm gonna revise the book and then I'm gonna publish it. And it's, as I mentioned, it's gonna be cheap and free, and, or cheap and free, cheap and easy to read. Uh, and uh, 
that's my plan. That's why I want to talk to you guys tonight. So if you want to learn about the book, end up at abundance.com or email me. Look at my blog every day, free interesting information, including swear words. So thank you very much. Yeah.
has 60 words. Elaborate on what? On this uh, controversy. Which controversy? Of the corruption of Ibn's what you said. To yeah, time. sure. Yeah, so um, the reason I broke the book into two halves, political and, and uh, economic, is because uh, the, the, the political discussion of water for farmers is the wrong discussion to have. Farmers should be uh, uh, getting access to water on the same economic basis as industry or as uh, people in cities. They should not be given privileged access due to being farmers, which is what happens in lots of places. Pretty much everyone. Like here. Yeah, sure. Here, in the Netherlands, by the way, the thing that's interesting, of course, is the Dutch, in the Netherlands, there's so much water, it's uh, water abundance, but water quality is the problem in the Netherlands. The same way it's a problem in Denmark, for example, because of pig farmers in Denmark or other agricultural practices. So the Dutch don't suffer from a, a lack of water, they suffer from a lack of water quality, and that can be traced back to agricultural practices. But we can talk about that later, in more than 60 seconds. One last question. Are you proposing free market economy more than safe drinking water? No, because that's impossible. The only free market you're going to get as far as safe drinking water is concerned is the competition with the beer. Right? It's going to be bottles of water against bottles of beer. That's a free market. But uh, tap water is regulated because it's a monopoly. It's a natural monopoly. So it's going to be regulated almost no matter what. And, and, and the important thing is, is it regulated wisely or badly? And I was just in a country to the east of here on a, on a mission for the World Bank, and I will tell you that they are probably doing the worst possible job of regulating their water, and it's going to cause a public health disaster. And, and that is the regulator. But there are free market problems as well, but I, there's no such thing as a free market in tap water. Which country was that? It was to the east of here. <laughs> Medium. Can you cycle? Can I cycle there? If I had some time. <laughs> that wasn't the right question. <laughs> Read my blog, you'll find out. Um, thank you. Thank you.